All right, I'm here with the lovely Laura Thorne. <laughs> and just wanted to start off our interview with a question about your playlist for today. I was watching your interview with Evo on Unmanageables, and <laughs> you said that music really drives how you're feeling and how you work. Yes, it absolutely does. And I find myself um, not turning it on enough and a lot of times I will turn it on in the morning and then I'll get a call or, you know, like sometimes you take a picture or something and it stops and then like three hours later, I'm like, why is it so quiet? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Bebo and I were also talking about how can we make work more enjoyable and that I think is one of the easy ways is just to put some music on. But yeah, I really, um, music has fueled me through my entire life and um so some days I feel the need to put on what I call my AM station on Pandora. <laughs> and yeah. that's a lot of like, um, just a lot of 80s and 90s maybe, kind of like Richard Marks <laughs> and, and uh, Christopher Cross sailing and Lionel Richie and stuff like that. So um, things I can listen to because I've heard them 10,000 times. So it doesn't distract me from, from working. Mm -hmm. um, but then other times if like, I've been having a challenging day or I've been feeling challenged in particular, then um, depending if it's sort of rebellious challenge that I'm listening to punk rock and if it's sort of like I need motivation, then it's hip hop. Nice. Yeah. So today I think I started with AM because it's just been rainy here for days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Well, that's that sounds about right. I mean, <laughs> I'd say the same as well. I'm mean, so lucky to have so many options as far as... Right. Having some a DJ just working in the background all day for us. <laughs> I will say a lot of times I'll just put on um, my instrumentals and that's just like I think my that station is called All the Feels but No Words. <laughs> and that's like movie soundtracks is what I listen to sometimes. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, I and also on your website I was doing a reading and I saw that we are both INTJs. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious um, if kind of doing those fun quizzes and then learning those things about yourself uh, has changed anything in particular for you or as far as like, like you said, as far as uh, finding better ways to work that work in the long run, not just one for what for a day or two. <laughs> yeah, so I, I both take stock in those and I don't. So they're a little bit like horoscopes, right, which are fluffy to me. Um, <laughs> I think depending on your perspective, any horoscope, if someone told you it was yours, you could find something out of it that you could relate to yourself. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I am also an Aquarius and I feel like that fits me very well. So. <laughs> um, but it's like the INTJ for people who don't know what that is. Um, it's the Myers-Briggs personality assessment and uh, it's a longstanding one. Um, I've taken it through 16 personalities, which is a free one online that I really like because that's fun little cartoons and tells you who your famous people you also share that with. And um, the INTJs, women are less than, what was it, like 2% of the population. Yeah. And uh, we're architects and it totally fits me because I tear things apart and put them back together, always. <laughs> People's stories, the, nudie, the news, like uh, stuff I'm working on, things I learn. I, I criticize the hell of it, pull it apart, and then put it back together. And <laughs> even even in my photography, I think that I'm always looking for the pieces and how things fit together, whether it's light and texture or different textures or colors. Like I'm still still the architect in my photography, I think. Hmm. So I think really it's if if it has any purpose for me, it just gives me a little bit more confidence or validation that this is a valid personality type and this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, what else? I was also seeing um, that I, I was curious about taking your art on the road. Speaking of taking things apart, like your whole life, all of a sudden, <laughs> when, when that just has to happen. <laughs> um, when you were on your art long RV trip, did you, how did you find ways to make taking pictures and uh, keeping that part of your life uh, in this tiny space. <laughs> yeah, so that was an exceptionally wonderful time in my life. I mean, it was uh, following a particularly difficult time, but it was much needed and time of reflection and just like getting my 
my mojo and my self-esteem back and confidence. And so driving a 35 foot rust bucket across the country is a great way to do that. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's also just, I mean, I wish I had done more photography at that time. I was kind of in between. So one of the things that I reflected on after I'd worked in government for 10 years, right before I went on that road trip was that I didn't, hold on to art enough. So when I was younger, I used to play cello and I used to do all kinds of art, not just photography, but photography was my love because I don't have patience <laughs> for the process of regular art, fine arts. And um, so kind of when things switched to digital, I didn't, you know, I hesitated on really making that shift and I love the dark room. So I didn't, there was a long period of time where the photography I took was, um, you know, I worked in the environment, so I still was outdoors and, and really learning. That was a great opportunity to just to learn what I, what you see out there. So my, I think it built on my photography, but, um, when I went on that road trip, I can't even remember what I was using for a camera. Um, but I did get to just film the, I mean, I went from Tampa to Yosemite, California. So the scenery was endless and ever changing, but I really, what I did do during that time, so now you're making me think, what I did do during that time was start my Instagram. So that was really the launch of me getting back into photography. Um, I decided I wanted to have a thing, you know, and so, and because when I quit that job, I decided I was going to do photography, business consulting, and career coaching, and then just see which one I liked, which one took off, you know, it was a diversification strategy. And so, of course, I like all of them. <laughs> and it's been really hard to keep all of them going. Um, but, you know, I kind of vowed to keep art in my life. So that's kind of when the photography or the, my Instagram page started and I had a lot of time. So I was fortunate to kind of catch that window when you could still get followers on Instagram. Um, easier now than you might be able to starting a page today um, and kind of get a really good base following. So now the struggle is keeping it going. And um so yeah, I didn't, I didn't really capitalize on photography in the way that I could have in like an Ansel Adams National Park kind of sense, but I really did uh, kind of bring it, reintroduce it back into the forefront in my life. Um, and if I did that trip again, it would be, it would be on because the face, you know, the Instagram page is already up and going. And <laughs> um, I did also incorporate it into um, a story map, which had GIS. So it, it mapped out all the places I had went incorporated with a blog. And so the photography was, was part of that story. Oh, yeah. That sounds, I mean, it sounds like, um, I'm not sure if you, maybe you end up coaching people through those kind of transitions anyway. Like the photography was important, but the healing and deciding where you're going to go next was also the biggest part that you needed to do at that time. So, yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> um, I know, um, yeah, it's not, and the, not to dwell on too much, but the experiences you had before that trip sounded like they were really impactful. And I, I was just curious um, how that's helped you coach people through those kind of parts of their life. I'm, I'm sure you're working with all different age, ages of, in our communities and even manufacturing things, like people always have things going on. <laughs> Is there um, anything to draw from, from that time that has helped, like, helped you with other people and help them get through it too? Um, absolutely. So I'm not a people person per se, which, <laughs> which surprises people because I do well with people, but, <laughs> um, I'm more an environment and an, and van an animals advocate. I leave kind of the bleeding heart stuff to the bleeding hearts. And, um, but I really like, I really, really like helping people who want to achieve achieve. And so when I, a lot of times I surprise my own self because I'll meet someone who I think is going to drive me nuts. And then I love them to death. And I try to help them to make things happen, whether it's <laughs> art business, regular business, just life. I do a lot of mentoring. Um, I really love working with people who are kind of in the college about to graduate or recently graduated space who just don't feel like they're ready for anything. Um, because I have been through a lot. And I still feel like a kid. So <laughs> I think that uh, it's easy for, for younger people to have a conversation with me. And also I, I don't wear kind of the, the facade that a lot of professional leaders wear that 
you know, I'm, I'm something and I, I, you can't approach me. Like I'm still the girl next door and I will tell you about life and what's real and what's not. And, um, you know, of course there's people that like that and some people who don't, but (laughs) I have, it's taken me a long time. That's one of the things you deal with in those situations is like, who are you? And owning and being proud of who you are and just like finding people who appreciate that instead of worrying about the ones who don't. Um, So I did a talk recently for a university online, my alumni at USF, um, go Bulls. And they just today sent me some feedback on like, I guess they had the students write up about like what they learned or what they really liked. And um, there were some really good comments in there about just, just sharing my story, I think just helps people. Uh, yeah, um, I guess speaking of writing, uh, I, your writing on your website's awesome. I'm, I'm envious of your writing skills, <laughs> but I'm sure it's something you've kind of wor- you've worked on. I know that if you're like a visual learner, which I feel like maybe maybe a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, that's like the second part that comes in. Like you're the artist first, and then you learn to write about art. Um, is that something you coach right now, or actually? Um... I've always done both. I wrote a book when I was 18. Um, I wrote poetry. I have a whole suitcase full of writings and poetry that I did. So um, all all the hemispheres of my brain just like are always going. So uh, I'm I'm glad that you said that though, because I kind of feel like I don't. (laughs) I read it and it sounds all kinds of awkward and weird to me. So thank you for that comment. But um, Actually, uh, Vivo and I were just talking about that, like things that we wanted to improve. So maybe I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> um, but no, I don't really help people. S- well, I don't know. I do. I do work with artists on telling their stories, I think. And I have another client who um, really speaks high level, you know, and I'm like, okay, we got to bring this down. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That balance of technical knowledge and up in the expression of your story and making just something that's easy to physically read. <laughs> so probably yeah. a, a whole combination of skills. Yeah, I will say Grammarly helps. Um, if anyone doesn't know what that is, there's an app, uh, browser download you can get and I Grammarly everything. <laughs> Spelling is definitely not my forte. Yeah, some of the other interviews also had uh, any list of pro tips for people to think about. You have tons of pro tips on your website and worksheets and all kinds of things we could all do. Architect. <laughs> yeah, Grammarly checked. <laughs> yes. And Canva. I think um, any anybody who's not familiar, doesn't want to spend the money, doesn't have the time to learn to use like Illustrator or Photoshop, like Canva is my best friend. I can use those tools, but I can do things so much faster in Canva because I'm not trying to, you know, there's a level I need to achieve that is here and not here. And Canva works brilliantly for me and for many other people. I recommend it to people too, for graphic design. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like graphic design for dummies, isn't it? (laughs) I mean, I'm sure like part of what you do too is saying like, look, there's people out here who have done the work. You can (laughs) capitalize on the work that's already there and use it for your own purposes. Yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, this was the last question I had, but um, I was wondering about how you got involved with the Creators Lounge as a physical creative space versus this digital one. That is a wonderful question. So the Creators Lounge is located here in Syracuse on the south side, and I live I live kind of beyond the south side in what's called the Valley. Um, diversity and inclusion has always been really important to me. And not only is the Creators Lounge sort of in my neighborhood, but it also serves a huge need here in Syracuse. So, um, and the woman who's running it, her name is Indaria. She's young. Like I, it's it's kind of when I see, when I see entrepreneurs and go getters like Indaria, it makes me, on the inside, just a, like my inner, twenty something year old, just super jealous because I'm like. God, if I had the the tools, the knowledge, the resources to do what she's got the confidence and ability and just willingness to try is like, God, what could I have done? But um, that again is like why I choose to spend time helping people with those areas. But um, 
she's just inspiring. So, so part of it was just like wanting to show support mm -hmm. and the other part is just a little bit, so it's a little bit like community support, doing my part for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then um, just like hanging out with cool people. Like the lounge is cool. I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. Like I need to hang out with cool people. So, <laughs> yeah. so it was like a good fit. Wow. They play music when you go in there. Oh, young, young okay. hip, cool <laughs> music, you know, <laughs> not my AM station with Lionel Richie on it. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That sounds like a really uh, excellent resource. I wish I, I mean, I, when I read it, I was like, oh man, these people seem, uh, yeah, so ahead of their time almost, but and but of their time too, as far as taking advantage of our technology and still having that real world connection. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. I, I'm excited to see what kind of stuff they do in the future, especially when people can lounge there again. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking forward to lounging together. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to interview me and asking these questions. Yeah. It's fun, fun to answer things like, and hear people. I, I like to see what you take notice of, like when you looked at my stuff. So that's cool. Oh, yeah. Well, um, in Freakonomics, they always ask at the end of the interview, what's one thing about you that most people don't know? And I was wondering if you had one of those. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm a blabber. I tell people everything. So what is something people don't know about me? Um, I mean, this is, I guess I just, I'm just going to say this one because maybe people don't know, but I want people to know. Like I've been a vegetarian since I was 20 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I want people to know that because I'm 43 years old. So I like to encourage people to also have a vegetarian diet because it's good for the planet and it's good for your face. <laughs> it shows, right? <laughs> have you um, expanded your vegetarian cuisine since we've been in quarantine? Or yes, I actually joined, um, I joined one of my clients' detox diet. So she started a, it's a 21 day detox, but it's a month to month program. So after the detox, you can go back to eating some of the things you've eliminated from your diet, like caffeine or eggs or um, dairy. Um, but I already discovered that caffeine is not coming back to me because I had this fog that I thought was from spending so much time on the screen, but it wasn't, it was from caffeine. As soon as I cut it out, like three days later, I had a super bad headache and then everything just cleared. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, there's been some other health benefits that are a little graphic, so I'm not gonna talk about them, but they're like, wow, this is for real. So, um, that and I've been trying to get a little bit more vegan eating anyway because the reason I became vegetarian was animal rights so I just felt a little bit like a hypocrite eating cheese so um, I will still eat pizza that's not going away but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, vegan minus pizza you know <laughs> yeah we call it a vegetarian sometimes <laughs> right yeah. so yeah that that'll be me and so yeah that's been um I've been doing a lot more cooking during quarantine Excellent. Well, I feel like it helps feed uh, your art practice and your business acumen. That's how. That's how I'm I taking a lot of photos of my food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, any anything else? Are we ready to sign off? I think that's it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you.